Here is our fourth and final video, and hopefully you've been watching the previous three. I'm sorry about my mistakes in video three. It happens. There you go. Um, in a perfect world, I'd redo it, but it is not a perfect world. Okay, so I'm not sure. Well, I can tell already that nothing's parallel. Um, so let's see, right, because we've got a vector 7, 3, negative 3, and then 5, 1, 3. Yeah, no, not going to happen there. So nothing, there's not a scalar multiple. Okay, so... I see 7, 3, negative 3, 7, 5, 1, 3, negative 7, um, negative 1, negative 1, 3, negative 7. I'm going to go ahead and put this row on top so that I can um, and multiply by negative 1. So 1, 1, negative 3, 7 becomes that new. This is a negative row 3, and this row 1 will move down here. Okay, now I've got the one that I want, and life is grand. Um, I didn't really want to divide through by 7 and have fractions all over the place. That's just gross. Okay, so keeping that row, I'm going to multiply um, negative 5 times row of 1 plus row 2. So that's uh, 0, negative 5, negative 4, 15, and 3 is 18. Uh, uh, okay, what is that? Negative 35 and a negative 7. This is a negative 42. Fantastic. Okay, now I'm going to do a negative 7 times row 1 plus row 3. This one's not very fun. That's 0, negative 7, and 3 is negative 4. Oh, that, that makes me curious. Okay, negative 3 times negative 7. So that's a positive 21 minus 3, right? 21 minus 3 is equal to... 18, and then I have um, negative 49 and 7 is a negative 42. Oh, what do you notice? What do you notice? I don't even need to divide through by anything. What I can do here, I mean, I can, but um, what I see is that I can take, oh, I can just take, here's row 2, I can just take row 2 and then subtract row 3, or one, one of them negative. This, and make that positive, that's 0. That subtracts to 0. That subtracts to 0. Okay, and so right here I can tell that I have um, infinitely many solutions. I had this true statement, um, and this was, this was true, so then, um, because 0 equals 0. So therefore, these three planes are going to intersect in one particular line. Now, it's kind of annoying. I've got kind of gross numbers, but um, so it goes. So um, what else do I want to think about? On, do, you, do you remember we, I forgot to say this, on number, on number 3, we came down to, we had this equation. We had two lines that were the same line, and then we had another line that intersected those, and so those are the sides of, I said the wrong thing. We had two planes, so plane one and plane two, or plane, no, I think it was plane two and plane three that were the same, and then this was plane one that intersected the both of them, and so this through here, and we're looking at a side view, this line that goes through here, that was the equation that we found on number three. This one on number four, we knew that our planes weren't, um, uh, my brain just stopped. Our planes are not parallel, and they intersect. We get a true statement. They intersect at a line. So basically what I have is something like a side view of something like this, where I've got a plane, another plane, and another plane, and they all intersect with this line that goes through the middle of them. Um, so if I'm going to write the equation of it, okay, well, let's see. This, this could be rewritten as 1, 1, negative 3, 7, and I can divide by 0, Divide by 2, because notice I can divide by 2 and everything. Um, maybe get negative 2. Okay, so that gives me smaller numbers to work with. So then if I'm going to find the parametric, I'm going to say that z equals t. And now I have that 2y minus 9t equals 21. <laughs> okay, 2y equals 9t plus 21. Here's hoping I can not be wrong this time. y would be equal to 9 halves t plus 21 halves, which is just, I mean, there's no way around it. That's just annoying. Uh, 
Would there be any reason to make t equal to z equal to two t? Oh, that could be nice. Does that help? Yeah, if I multiplied this, um, if I came along, okay, well, I don't really want to work with fractions. So what we're going to do instead, okay, hang on, I'm going to, I'm going to think through this again. I'm going to say, let's let z equal 2t. And so now this equation becomes 2y minus 9 times z, which is 2, which is 2t, equals 21. It might improve things a little bit. Um, 2y, add the 18t, equals 18t um, plus 21. Well, we still have a gross fraction. Okay, well, whatever. y is equal to 9t plus 21 over 2. All right, whatever. And then we need to go back and find z, or I lied. We need to go back and find x. So we're going to use this equation right here, and I just don't feel like it. So check, I think the answer key is already posted. Um, maybe I can pull that up. But if I type in the values that I'd gotten from before, I have 7, 3, negative 3, 7, 5, 1, 3, negative 7, negative 1, negative 1, 3, negative 7 is what I'd written down. And I had infinitely many solutions. Um, I'm going to cheat for just a second before I stop recording and see. I think I have an answer key already posted. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. So I I was right. If I go with um, if I go with this one that I was working on here, um, that's exactly what I had before. And this x would be equal to a negative three halves t minus I think I have seven over two. So I don't feel like finding that right now. I'm gonna make you do a little bit of work. Have fun. Practice. <laughs>